for the next um, uh, for for coming months and years. And. Uh, thanks. I'm going to quickly cover a couple of items about testing the study. Today we wanted to just mostly focus on the analysis, and so I tried to keep it less than half an hour, but I thought it's very important to, to cover some of this stuff because I don't exaggerate if I say I spend half of the time that we talk to people who use our system for support to just go through these items. Probably even more, maybe 60% of the time is spent just to go through a couple of items that I, uh, I, I uh, will talk about it here. Uh, it's not gonna take much time. I'm also excited to mostly focus on the analysis. Uh, there are a lot of interesting things that uh, I, I, I really wanted to share. Uh, but uh, first, we want, uh, it's good to start um, with this. Uh, the very first uh, item that's good to check is the participation period. There are a lot of, uh, I've noticed there are a lot of uh, mistakes happen here. When you set the study duration and participation period, you really have to be careful, although it's just, it seems simple, you only pick three numbers. Uh, you have to be careful that how that impacts participants uh, when they join, how long they're gonna be part of the study. Uh, and ver a very easy way to check is to just go to, um, participation adherence page and see what is the joined in date and the last day. Basically it says the study starts from this day. Actually the label here probably can be improved. I should take note that it's not joined in, it's the date that the, the, part the study will start for this participant. And this is the, the last day that data collection happens. If this is me joining our study that we created yesterday, I joined a day late and that's why it shows that I joined on June 25th at uh, 6.54 a.m and the last data collection will happen on June 26th at 23.59, uh, basically end of the day. The time zone matters here. This is local time zone, uh, central standard time. So it's really important to check to make sure that uh, this is what you intend for. So the study period, the, the study only, the data collection only happens in this period. And it's really easy to make a mistake. Like I did it this morning. I was trying to test a survey and I kept uh, trying it and it was not working and I was like, oh, it has to be tomorrow so why it doesn't show up? Turned out that because tomorrow, of course, is, af is 27 and it's after the study start time. And like it took me 15 minutes to figure that out only. <laughs> I do it every day. So, so it's really, really important to keep in mind that, uh, uh, that uh, the participation period is exactly what you intend, uh, intend it to be. The other thing to test is the data sources. Uh, you just have to check that you included all the data sources that are necessary. Is there anything missing or anything that's extra that you can remove it? Uh, it's uh, the, the most important impact will be on participants' battery life. The more you cut from data sources if you don't need it or if it can be substituted by something more lightweight, for example, like mo raw motion sensor data versus pedometer data. It's really important to, uh, uh, to make these distinctions and pick the data sources carefully. What permissions are required to collect the data from the selected sources? Uh, it's, uh, it's, I strongly suggest to, to join in your study in Android and iPhone and check the process, what permission prompts you get so you know if people join with an Android phone or with an iPhone, what kind of permission pr uh, 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 request they get so you can explain it. One of the items that's very unintuitive, that of course it's on, it's on us to make the user interface a bit better and better explain it, is on iPhone, when you ask for any sort of sensor data, the first prompt that you get is that, can we access your GPS? And people really freak out, like, okay, I didn't ask for GPS, I just wanted to collect screen, screen data, screen time use, sorry, screen uh, time data. So why you're asking for GPS? So things like this, you just have to be able to or you or anyone, any of the study staff that are doing the deployment, they should be able to explain why these permissions are being asked and what kind of data is being collected. Uh, another important one is the survey flow. Like we have a long way to go to make the, system, to the uh, survey simulator that we have, the survey preview more usable and more uh, practical. Uh, but there are some practices that you can follow to uh, very well test 
the flow of the survey that you have created, especially when you have uh, criteria that point to the questions in other surveys in the study. You, we talked about how criteria can be used to enable or disable a page, to enable or disable a triggering logic. These are really good, but at the same time, they make the survey very, the, the survey very complicated. And the more complex it gets, the harder it gets to, uh, to figure out it, is it really what you intend to do or not, especially if you do any modifications after that. The best, uh, the best flow we have found that to test it the fastest way is that while you're just adding questions, you can use survey preview to just quickly test to see if this is what you intended for or not. When you added all the questions that you, you needed, then it's good to test it on a real phone and just make sure that you, you test all the skip patterns and triggering logic. But the tricky part is the surveys that are not user triggered. So for example, you test a survey, you have a survey that's supposed to be prompted every, for example, every week on Sunday afternoon or when uh, two beacons are in proximity or, or a, a complex triggering logic like that. For testing that, the best practice is to just set it to be user triggered and test it, and when you're done with the flow, remove that triggering logic. For example, I, uh, I uh, will show it here. Uh, let me see, okay, I have this uh, 4015, So this is the study that we created yesterday, uh, on uh, Monday, and I added two surveys here. One is a baseline, su baseline survey that asks uh, for participants' uh, gender, and the other one asks for weight and height. Both of them are time triggered. So if I just want to test it on a phone, it's never, it, it, well, it doesn't get prompted. I believe this one is odd. So I assume that the baseline survey, I want it to be prompted as soon as they join. So it's uh, zero days and, uh, and uh, yeah, between zero days and zero days, so basically as soon as they join, uh, and only one. So this is probably the triggering logic I have in mind. I'm gonna publish it. You might get a notification right now that the change happened. Okay. Uh, okay. And this is another survey that I want to, now forget about triggering logic for now, assume that I want to ask this, this maybe a day after participants join. And I want to ask a couple of questions, for example, on, uh, on uh, height, on weight, and also if the participant is female, I want to ask whether she is pregnant or not. So these are the three questions that I have. But I have to test to make sure, because the question that determines whether the participant is female or not is in another survey. It's a survey that I asked at the beginning of the study. So if I join, uh, let me move this around. If I join in this uh, study, here in the simulator, of course, like you can do it in your phone, assume this is the phone. Well, there's no way for me to run this, uh, this, this uh, uh, surveys and test it because one of them only is prompted once when I join, the other one only is prompted once the next day, and so the maximum I can try it is two times on a phone. So one thing that I can do is I can come here and for both of these surveys, for this one that's my baseline survey and for this one that's related to weight and height, I can add a user trigger uh, 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 triggering logic here, call this baseline, add, I can save it, publish it. I can say no because I want to still make more changes here, okay. And then here I can also add another user tr uh, triggered uh, button here called weight. Now if I come here, if I do update the studies that this has, you can see now I have a button for each of those surveys and I can keep trying them. Now I can go here first to the baseline. I say I'm male, and this is actually for my next example, so for now discard this. And when I go to weight and height, I can enter my height my weight, and you see it doesn't ask me the, 
it didn't ask me the, the, the uh, pregnancy question. So it means that it works. But now if I respond at, in baseline, if I respond I'm female, it should ask me that question. See, if I, I, I'm gonna try baseline survey again here, I'm gonna say I'm female, next, that's me. Now if I take this survey again, Here I got this question. So this way you can basically add a button for all the surveys that you have in your study and keep responding to them. Doesn't matter if it's something that's designed to be responded only once, like baseline. You can just keep responding to it and every time that you respond, every other survey, because uh, every other survey should work based on the last response. Like my last response was, I'm a female, that's why it asked me. If I respond to it again and say I'm a male, it has to behave differently. So if you add a user triggered button to all of your survey, you can quickly go through it and check all the flow that you have in all your surveys. And that's really easy to test and make sure that all the, pre all the uh, skip patterns and branchings, no matter how complex they are, are properly implemented and they behave correctly as you expect. No, this is, this is prior to deployment. Actually, like maybe I should have said something. Uh, there are three phases before the deployment. The first is that when you create a study, you have to test it yourself and just make sure that it completely works and everything is, is, ju is just as you expect. Uh, that's very easy. You, you can try on your own phone with your own participant account. You can just do it as I'm doing right now with your phone on your side and, the, uh, and your researcher account open the, in the browser. You can keep editing it, trying on the app, and make sure it works. When you got this part working, now you have to uh, try it on a few friends with, and colleagues as dummy participants, ask them to join in your study, and go from like basically try the whole study protocol. Start from the very first day that you want to recruit a participant and assume that the study goes for, I don't know, a week or maybe a, even if it goes for as long as a year, try to for a month, for a week or two weeks, try the flow and uh, make sure that everything that, that can impact, that is important in when you go to the field is being tested. So when you do this as well, when you try it with few colleagues and uh, friends and test those parts, then it's probably, the, even if there are changes coming up, it's probably changes that uh, are either very minor or the ones that you couldn't have expected at the beginning of the study. So participants don't need to update their study anymore because that the version that you complete here that you uh, implement here is the version that you want to uh, pass it to the actual participants. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so if you uh, complete your study and you roll it out, uh, and after some time you realize that, oh, you have to change that flow or you made a mistake or no, this thing has to be different. You can make that change, test it again yourself. The, a good practice is that don't publish it or, or publish it, but don't update participants' devices because if you don't publish it, you can't test it as a, as, a, as a participant yourself. So publish it, but don't update participant devices yet. Then test it yourself to make sure that the change that you applied is exactly what you wanted to apply. And when you are confident, then you can go to uh, adherence page here. So if I, I can make some changes here, I can make some changes here, and it can keep asking me that, do you want to update? I say, no, don't do it. Then I can test it myself, and when I'm confident, I can go here to uh, adherence, and I can update participants' devices from here. And they will receive the latest changes. You can also not do that, you can just wait after, but as soon as you publish it, you basically uh, make it available to participants, and I within a few days, their device contacts the server and gets the latest version anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, equivalent. Doesn't matter. You make a change here, and for example, when for example I remove the survey, I save it, publish it. Whether here I say yes update the participants devices or here I go and say update all devices or I go to the app and say 
update my study down here. All of them update the study from here. Yes. You can do it as well. Here you can choose that, yes, only update for example, this ID and don't update the other ones. Or here you can say only update this device and not the other ones. Yeah, here, when I talk about preview survey, is about this survey preview here that allows you to actually look at the but this doesn't have all the features that, for example, this, this doesn't have all the features that you get in the survey. For example, this doesn't uh, check the criteria that are linked to other pages, uh, other surveys, the skip patterns and branching. It doesn't uh, take all the variables into account when, it's, when if you have any variable substitution in your questions. So there are some limitations with this. We're working to improve this, but uh, even then, it's very important to test it on uh, on phones before handing out uh, before rolling out the study. Yes, yes, for all of them. Like for example, you can see it says mail, uh, and it tells me what time I say early and done. But if I come here, if I uh, for example go to the next and go to the next page, uh, yes. Well, it didn't ask me that question about pregnancy because it just by default evaluated it to false, while it should have evaluated it to true. Uh, depends exactly, like, you, you can do that as well. Uh, but if the survey flow works, as you expect, I'll talk about how you can test the triggering logic both for time and for proximity as well. These, if you test these three, then doesn't matter that your study is for one week or five years. So the same, the same flow applies, right? The same, the same flow uh, works this time and next year and the year after as well. Any other questions about this one? Uh, the next one is testing survey triggering. Uh, if it's uh, eligibility triggering logic, or if it's user triggering logic, or if it's dropout, these three are simple. Like They have to be presented when you join the study. They have to be presented as a button. They have to be presented when you try to drop out. The two that are a bit more tricky, one is time. The other one is proximity. How you would test a survey, whether, for example, your proximity uh, configuration is correct. You have cor correctly programmed the beacon. You have correctly uh, adjusted those settings. How you test uh, this um, timetable that you have defined is properly uh, is presented properly. Uh, for time, Ethica actually calculates the schedule uh, of all the future surveys. Actually, not all of them. For the next, I think, 40 pr uh, uh, prompts. Uh, I think it's. it's Sorry, for the next 150 prompts, right after the participant joins. Either 150 or anything lower than that if it's supposed to be cut before that or lower than that. But then it keeps adding 50, 50, 50 to, to, to uh, uh, have always enough of surveys available. Uh, so, and you can see when these prompts are supposed to be presented to participants. So, um, you can go to the survey sessions page and check if the schedule is exactly what you intended or not. Especially if you have multiple triggering logics. For example, you say, uh, uh, what one thing we were talking with Kimanta yesterday was a couple of triggering logics that uh, a, a question in the baseline would ask participants, when do you want to receive your survey? Morning, early, uh, like early morning, late morning, afternoon, or evening. And then based on that, you would, you would uh, schedule a survey for the next day to be presented. I tried to uh, create a survey just like that here as well. Assume that in our baseline, 
we ask a question here that what time of the day is best for you to receive the scheduled survey? And we give them four options, from 6 to 8, from 8 to noon, noon to 4 p.m., and 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. And then we want to set our other survey to be presented based on what they chose in the previous one. To say, if they chose in the previous one from 6 to 8, use this one. If it's from 8 to 12 to noon, use this one. Noon to 4 p.m., this one, and so on. So how to test this is that I, uh, if I go here in my researcher dashboard, I go to survey sessions, and uh, sorry, the internet is a little slow today. Okay, so I can choose this participant, the last one that I just joined. I believe that's my account. Thirteen two nine eight, yes, uh, and the survey number is four one zero four. 016 for the day 26. You can see that right now it's set to be prompted at 4.58 p.m. Now if I go here, the same practice as before, I have all of them as user triggered. I go back on my phone, I, I'm in here in the baseline, I say I'm a male, and I want to receive it early in the morning from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. This is the trick, I, I believe it should show me uh, nothing here. Yeah, it disappeared. The reason that it doesn't show that anymore because 6 to 8 a.m. is already past of today and my participation is only until the end of today. But if I choose, for example, from noon to 4 p.m., it should show me one pending survey here at some time between noon to 4 p.m. I'm gonna take this survey again, so I'm male. If I just with the same setting, press go here, you see there's one pending that says it's scheduled for Wednesday 26 at 12.58. That's participant local time zone. So I know that, okay, so they're not gonna receive four of them, only the third one will be applied here. And the same if I just choose uh, evening, it should be something between, a time between four to 8 p.m which is 4.58, or time randomly chosen in that range. So you just have to check a any, any schedule that you have. You have to uh, join as a participant and see what's the date that you get here. And is it the, the date that you expected the survey to be presented? If not, there's something wrong with that. That has to be fixed. The last one is the proximity uh, triggering logic. For this, you have to test, this is actually quite complex. You have to test two things. First, you have to test, test that you have programmed your weekend correctly. I actually wanted to show uh, 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 one thing on, that is, I can't show it on the simulator. It has to be on real phone. Uh, there are tools, there are a lot of apps on App Store. One of them, for example, is Beacon Scanner that you can use to scan beacons in proximity and it shows the values that the beacon uh, is programmed with. So when you do uh, go in the beacon mapping and you say, well, here's my team ID, role ID, subject ID, it gives you a UUID and major minor value and you program and them and everything. Now you have to make sure that you have programmed them, programmed them correctly. You can easily just open this um, uh, application. Let me see if I can show it here. I want to view this thing. You can see that it shows all of the beacons that we programmed yesterday. Number one, number six, if I scroll a bit. Number two, number one again, number one. These are the different major values, number eight. So. You can easily scan the beacons that are in the room, what are the values that they are showing, and so just to make sure that the values that you have programmed them are the correct values. Because if the value is incorrect and it's wrong, it's not what you have entered in the beacon mapping, it's not gonna work. It's just 
It might detect you or it might not even detect you. Because if the value is incorrect, especially if the UUID is incorrect, it thinks it's a different beacon that's not relevant to Ithaca, so it doesn't even pick it up. So it doesn't even report that, hey, there is something that's incorrectly programmed. So you just have to make sure that you uh, correctly program these, uh, these beacons. And a trick that you can use is to uh, use these uh, USB beacons because you can very easily simulate people coming into contact and leaving them. When you plug it in, it's, it's like that beacon appeared. When you unplug it from the USB, it's like the beacon turned off. So it's like the person departed. I, I use it, like, and all of us, like me and my colleagues often use it for testing it because I, I it's very easy. I plug it to USB. It's like the person that I, well, I'm testing something. It's like the person appeared. And I just leave it there for half an hour. I unplug it. I unplug it. It's like the person departed. And then I have to get the prompt on the app. If, it, if I don't get it, there is some configuration not, not correct. Yeah, I mentioned, uh, so before I go to the other two sections, any uh, question about this, this testing of surveys so far? We talked with Rifat's question about uh, the importance of testing with dummy participants. After testing the study uh, set up yourself, simulate the entire study protocol with friends and colleagues, invite them as dummy participants to join the study, and then make sure that every step of the study deployment goes as you expect. Ethica also captures every detail of participant interactions with the Ethica app and reports to the researchers. So every time that they open the app, every survey they get, every beacon that their phone visits, uh, every time they log in, log out, sign up, everything, all of those are reported. You, if there is something for an individual that you see it's not working, you can go through these audit logs. They look like this, for example, it says at uh, three, uh, I, I believe application up there, so at uh, two minutes, uh, uh, 3 a.m. and two minutes, automatic data upload started, and then upload survey responses started, upload survey responses started at this, finished after one second, automatic data upload that was started at this time, finished after th uh, six seconds, uploading around one and a half megabytes of data, you can read this, like, like it's basically all the actions that the app has done. If you notice that there is something broken, you can just go through this and see what was the problem there. And by the way, this one is also through Kibana. If you go to Kibana, uh, just the same way that we, started, we looked at data yesterday, I can come here, I believe I have already created an index for looking at participant history data that I selected over there. I just have to say, instead of last 15 minutes, I say show me the reports from 25th yesterday. And I can say only for user ID one and sort by time. The only, th the two things that are important are event type and messages. And you can see that every time that I've opened the app, I've closed the app, every survey that's pre presented, and whether it was responded or not, all the beacons visited, and so on. There is a detailed description of what events are available and what each of them mean. If you come to the documentation, the analysis participant history report talks about how you can access this and what are the events that are available. Like user events, like sign up, sign in, sign out, and so on, app events, survey events, notification events, settings, like for example, if they have set their phone to upload via Wi-Fi only, and then they're not connected to Wi-Fi, you're not gonna get any data. And then the question is that, okay, so why a few days or a few weeks has passed and we don't have any data from this participant? You can easily come here and see that it says, user checked upload via Wi-Fi only settings. So it means that the app will only upload when the uh, Wi-Fi is available. And then you can see that the events for, and I think there will be entries that uh, automatic upload, data upload started, automatic data upload finished unsuccessfully because user was not connected to Wi-Fi. Yeah, so there, you can use this as a reference. Mm. Okay. The 
couple of points about the roadmap, but before we go there, uh, is everything, anything, any questions about this so far? Yes. I believe what uh, uh, the, uh, like um, what the suggestion was that is if there are surveys that participants are expected to do or activities that they're expected to do on daily basis, uh, you can just uh, like and you only need data for example for 14 days from every participant or uh, 20 days for every participant, just add a bit of a warm up time period at the beginning, maybe two days or so. You don't have to test tell participants that hey the first two days. We, it's just uh, we are going to discard the data. You actually shouldn't tell them so they think that the study is 22 days and they do all their uh, the best to provide the best data for all of the 22 days. But you can expect that things might go wrong the first two days. If they don't, you can only take 20 days of that. But, but you can assume that always you take the data from the uh, 20, uh, from second day to the 22nd day. But Nate, maybe you, you can comment more on, uh, on that. Oh yeah, yeah. For the break, yes. Yes. So a couple of items about the roadmap. Uh, I actually, I'm actually very. Also one of the goals of this workshop was for me, Nate, and others in the team to learn that how we have, what we have to implement, and what's the shortcomings of Ethica. The ones that uh, I already have mentioned that it's our focus for the next uh, probably a few months. The first is completing the web-based web Ethica app uh, and the rollout support for SMS and email notifications and all the activities that we have shown, like the time use tracker, the expense tracker, integration with ASA24 and the cognitive task. Uh, and uh, there is another feature that's coming up for uh, uh, supporting secure communication be between participants and researchers, like through the app, participants should be able to uh, message researchers or even make uh, calls to researchers like uh, through the system. And one thing that Megan suggested yesterday that I believe was like a very, very good suggestion that we plan to squeeze it in our roadmap before, uh, before fall is the support for researcher-defined survey sessions. So surveys, uh, so researchers are able to generate um, the time that they intend for a survey to happen in any randomization that they have in mind and they can upload that and then that overrides any session that Ethica has defined and that becomes like a uh, uh, the point of reference. For, for the same for activities, for example, if you intend, uh, uh, the, for example, for ASA24 integration on certain days to ask participants to complete those uh, food recalls, nutrition recalls, uh, and the triggering logic that we have doesn't provide the support that you have in mind, uh, you should be able to define those uh, uh, sessions for uh, completing each of those activities, whether it's survey or not, or something else. And you can upload that to the system, and Ethica should use those as the sessions for participants. And for later 2019 and next year, we will be focusing on integrations with other analysis tools. Kibana has been great for uh, anal an analyzing sensor data, but primarily intended for large-scale sensor data. It's not very good when you are analyzing survey responses. You need more flexibility. The survey responses inherently are smaller in size. They're not at size of sensor data, but you need more flexibility in running queries. Tools like MetaBase Superset, Apache Superset, and of course SAS, SAS uh, SATA and R are very good for uh, this analysis. Uh, we are already working on the first two, MetaBase and Apache Superset, and we, are, uh, we already have a plan to integrate with the other three as well. There are probably some um, uh, limitations there, uh, but this is what we hope that we can roll out by uh, next year. 
Uh, the support for variables uh, on mobile and web-based ethical applications, we talked about that, that uh, we, we are working on Google uh, Fit and Fitbit right now, and uh, we hope that we can expand it next year. And other sensor-based triggering logic. So we talked about beacons, but there are a lot of triggering logics based on um, screen time, based on GPS, for example, when you enter a geofence, when you leave a geofence, if you have used your screen, your phone for longer than a certain period, like for more than three hours a day or less than half an hour a day, uh, 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 triggering logics like that, that basically use uh, other sensor data, like motion sensors, to prompt surveys or other activities that have to be completed. And uh, the notifications for researchers, that was the suggestion that Brianna had, but also we had thought about it uh, before as well. Uh, this allows uh, researchers to basically to define uh, criteria that, for example, if a certain survey is responding in this certain way, researchers should be notified, especially for uh, more, uh, 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 for example, uh, the, the studies that deal with uh, participants' emotions or suicidal ideations. If any uh, response like that is detected, researchers should be notified. Uh, and notifications like this, we will we'll be adding them. But if there is anything else that you have in mind, uh, please let's talk about it. I'm available. I'm going to be here until tomorrow afternoon, and any time from now until tomorrow afternoon, I would be more than happy to to, uh, to discuss uh, your thoughts. Okay, sorry, uh, we are a bit over time. I intended to be shorter, but well, 10:30, so I can stop here, and uh, we can go for we can go for a break now. Uh, but if there is uh, anything that uh, the, the question that Megan had or anything else that you want to discuss, I'm available. Thank you. Yeah, and then after the break, we'll focus on the, uh, on the data visualization.